<clears throat> Hello, my name is Taklas, and today we're going to be looking at a Project Spark tutorial on how to create a complex character. Now, you've probably seen a uh, how to make a character from the tutorial, but that went into the just just the very light basics. So instead of that, we're going to be going into some complexities, like how to make a good interacting range, how to uh, make a death animation in sequence and how to have multiple lives so that they can only die so many times and then that's it for them. So first off we have our little knight right here and he doesn't have a brain. So I'm gonna start off with the ABXY commands and I'm gonna start with B which is gonna be my interact button because it's the most complex. So if I just do when B do interact this would work but unfortunately it gives your character infinite range to interact with so that's not going to work instead we're going to do when detect interactable uh, let's see oh where is it at detect interactable offset here we go front side I believe no that's not it where is this at it used to be in objects here we go it is in sensors object filters objects in front now we're gonna make child code so that the code only runs when it detects an interactable up front. First we're going to make a little nice appearance thing. So we're going to highlight uh, let's see highlight it and let's highlight it. What color should we highlight it? We're going to highlight it green. I would do blue but we're in a blue environment so it wouldn't show up. Next we're going to do when B pressed, do interact. There we go. That makes it so only objects in front are interactable and they highlight when they're available to be interacted with. <clears throat> Next, this one is going to go quick. When A pressed, do jump. And now X, X is going to be my light attack. And I'm not going to give it a pressed modifier because I want this to be able to be able to press and hold and just constantly attacking. So when, okay, we're going to do attack, light, and that's it. So when you press and hold X, it'll just attack light constantly. Now we're going to do the heavy attack. When Y pressed, because I don't want you to be able to constantly do a heavy attack heavy and combo so this slows down how fast you can do heavies next we're gonna do let's see left stick where's that oh no left stick move there we go so on left stick, it moves. And finally, the last thing before we do our first test is we're going to give it a camera. We're going to give it a follow camera. So it looks like we're going to walk around just fine. We can jump, double jump, and we can just constantly do this light attack or we do a heavy attack, but even when I'm button jamming, it only goes this fast. Now let's walk up to it. And I don't know how well you can tell, but it is highlighted, there we go. It is highlighted in green. So then, oh yeah, it's my sword, baby. So, I could attack this little fox, but I don't feel like being cruel today. All right, so we have the very basics done. Now let's move on to some better, harder commands. I'm going to do sprint next. Now I'm going to do sprint 
like they do in, let's say, Dead Rising 3 rather than how they do in Call of Duty, where you have to keep pressing and holding the button to keep sprinting. Now this is not complex enough to give a timeout on how long you can sprint and then have a recovery. This is just, while you're pressing it, it sprints. When you let go, it stops. So first, when, I'm gonna use left bumper. When left bumper is pressed, do movement properties on land speed, increment by, and I have found three to be about the perfect number. Now, when you press it, it increments it up by three. But if you kept pressing it, then every time you pressed it, it would increment up by three again and again and again and again. That's not how you want it to do it. So we're gonna copy and paste this line. And now we're going to do released decrement by three. Simple as that. When you press it, you start sprinting. When you release, you stop sprinting. Now you can also make some child lines and add a cool effect when they start sprinting, but I'm not gonna go into that today. So that makes a sprint able. Now also keeping the lines of Dead Rising 3, which happens to be, at least at this moment, the game the third most the, the third person game I have put the most time into, I'm gonna do when they click no I want right joystick. When they click the right joystick, they dodge. But I also want it to be with strafing. Because when you're doing with strafing, you can get some really cool side flips and back flips. Well, not side flips, side strafing, but you can also get back flips. Let's see, what's another useful command? Let's do, let's make a uh, right trigger, let's make that shoot. As if it was a first person shooter. So, right trigger, and let's make it full auto because I'm feeling fun today. Shoot. Now, I really don't like the fireball. So I'm going to grab another object. What should I grab? What should my character be shooting? I have almost everything unlocked, which makes me happy. My character is going to shoot crystal shards, because why not? Now, this will give some fairly default frequencies, um, which you can go into more by going to the modifiers and at speed or with wind up and whatnot. Um, but I'm not going to go into that right now. If you want to get into that, feel free, but that's not where I'm going today because I want to make this a quick tutorial. So let's try these new, new commands, see how they work out. Make sure I did everything right, because I'm not even quite perfect, you know? So, walking around, I'm going to grab the sword. Now I'm going to use my sprint, which does make me walk faster. We're going to release it slower. So, if we look from the side, I do, do in fact go faster. Now I'm going to click the right joystick, which makes me roll. But if I was in the middle of an attack, I can do a backflip or a side strafe, which is why with strafing is so cool. Next, let's do the gun. Granted, this isn't the best possible projectile, but it does look cool. So, looks like that's all the new commands we've added. And it seems like our character is pretty well refined as well as controls come. Now, let's start giving him a uh, an interface. So, we're going to create a health bar. Create interface show meter. And let's put it at the top. We're gonna put this at the top and we're going to make the oh we're going to make the color because who needs red right we're going to make it blue because my my hero has blue blood or something he's cool like that but this only has to show a meter in blue we also need it to be specified to show health now this is where things are going to get interesting because i'm going to do a lot more than just have health 
we're going to create a couple of quick variables. So if you don't understand variables, don't panic because I didn't understand them either. The first one is going to be health. Equals that. The next one is going to be max health equals, uh, let's see, there we go. So instead of making this just health, we're going to make this into the, oh, make that into the variable of max health. We're also going to create an interface that shows the text of that. And the reason we made a variable for max health and health is this allows us the opportunity to increase your max health later and have your meter uh, adjust accordingly. It's also a good idea to put max number as max health. So actually, I'm trying to think if I did this right. No, I do need to have health right there. So show meter health and the maximum is max health. There we go, that seems right. If that's not right, I'll come back and fix it. So we're going to create a text interface now showing the health along with a meter. So display. Okay, first off, we want to create some a new text that says health with a space. Now we need to go to math and do plus. Then we need to grab health, paste it, then plus. And now we need to just do slash. Another plus and then max health. We're going to put this also at the top of the page, but since this is beneath this, it'll automatically default to underneath it. And because we want it to be easy to read, we're gonna make it extra large font. So that should work. Let me throw an enemy into the world so we'll be able to see if everything works properly, which at this point, it's starting to get a little more complex. So if not everything works perfect on the first try, that's all right. We can always go back and fix things. Let's put this snow goblin out here. We're going to call him a snoblin. So it looks like things are working perfectly. I've been working extensively on creating a Legend of Zelda world, and in that world, you can find heart containers which will increase your maximum health. That's why I made a variable separate for the max health. If you have no interest in that, you could take out the whole variable thing and just put either a number or the maximum health. So it looks like that's working excellently. Let's get into a death sequence. First things first, we need to place a logic cube, which I have one right here. We need to place a logic cube pretty much near his position or wherever you want him to respawn. So we're going to do when is dead, do switch page. Now, because I plan to have multiple pages, or well, I'm going to leave the opportunity open to it, I'm going to call the page death. So we're going to come to the next page, rename page death. So when page entered, first we're going to give it some fancy effects. So we're going to give it a letterbox. We're also going to give, let's see, we want the position to move back to this logic cube. So do position equal, now we need to do an in-world picker and select this logic cube, and then just copy and paste position again. However, if we do this, it'll instantly teleport us back there, and we don't want that. We want a quick little about 
one second. We want, you, we want the character to be able to die, fall on their back, and then get teleported to this position. Now, an interesting thing about how this world works in Project Spark is that all characters default to being destroyed when they're on death. When they're destroyed, you can't revive them, but it takes them about two seconds to be destroyed. So what we're going to do is we're going to put another countdown timer, except we're going to make this uh, 1, 1.2. And then we're going to revive. So that after one second, they get teleported back to the logic cube, and just over a second, they get revived. Now, because I want there to be a penalty to dying, the first thing I'm going to do is, no, I don't want that under when. When. We don't need a when for this. Come on, get off. We need to say health equals, let's make it so they have 25% health, or 25 health when they die. So that when they die, and when they're revived, their health equals 25. Now we need to put a timer on this or else they'll instantly put their health back to 25 and when they're revived, they'll go back to 100. So we're also gonna put an equal timer to that. Last but not, well, this isn't even last, but at, let's do, what, 2.5 seconds, do, Switch page, and I need to rename this page to start. So switch page. Uh, let's see. Start. So what we've done here is when the page is entered, it'll show the letter boxes after one second It'll move the character position to the logic cube. After 1.2 seconds, it'll revive them, and it'll set their health to 25. And after two and a half seconds, it'll uh, switch them back to the start page, which gives them access to their controls again. It's also not a bad idea to create a quick interface saying, you have died. If your world relies on coins, you can also strip them of some or all of their coins if you wish to, which I've done in previous worlds. Now the very last thing that we're going to do is we're gonna create a new number variable and this one is gonna be called lives. One our lives minus one. So this lives is subtracted by one. However, lives does not have a normal value. So we're gonna go back to our start page. I'm gonna to go to the top. We need to set this to once because we only want this line to run once and instead of minus, we need to equal to and we're gonna do three. We're gonna give our character three lives, but only once, they only get three lives once. So when they die, a life gets subtracted. And our final thing is when lives are equal to zero, then I, I'll get into more detail here in a bit, but just so we know that it worked, we're gonna make them explode. Because what else would we possibly do? Come on. going to have fire explosion. Oh wait, hang on. Play effect fire explosion. There we go. So, and very, very quickly, if I, I hopefully I haven't gone over your head on this, we're gonna create a new interface that displays lives, but not just lives. We also wanna have some text that says lives remaining and this oh, hold on and a space we need to add a plus right here and I'm going to tell this to sit at the bottom of the page in very large font 
Whew. All right, I hope you're still with me on this. Goodness, we're at 20 minutes on this video already. At least, I am. So I'm going to modify my snoblin so that it doesn't take me 50 hits to kill me. Oh, wait. Melee. He's going to do 50 damage, so he drops me in two hits. Assuming it's all works. So, you see I have lives remaining there at the bottom. and He's going to hit me really, really hard. So I have died. I get teleported here, and then I get revived. But I only have 25 health. Looks like our lives remaining counter didn't go down like we meant it to. That might simply be because I may have used minus when I meant to use uh, decrement. And it looks like this goblin is just spawn, spawn camping us here. But I've clearly died more than three times, so it's not just the, uh, the display is messed up. Because sometimes your display is messed up and you mistake that as the actual counter is messed up. But I don't think that's the case. I think I need to switch it to decrement instead of minus. So I'm going to go here. Decrement by. Let's see if this works out. I'm going to take him away from here so he doesn't start spawn camping me again. Oh, well now we've run into an interesting problem. Because I didn't specify a when, it ran that line infinitely on that page, like it was supposed to, but I kind of forgot about it. Now, if we specify once, it'll only run it once ever, never again. So instead, we're going to do when page entered, which means this line will run once when the page is entered. Come over here, Snoblin. There we go. So I died. And I have two lives remaining. Ooh, this is looking good. Now, this isn't exactly the fanciest respawning that you could ever have, but it's simple and it works. So now hit me again. That time I exploded because it equaled zero. But what you can do instead is you can have a fancy little death screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a very quick third page to our character and we're going to call this page game game over. And now one of the very important things that we have to do first is we have to go to is it combat? It's either combat. Here we go. Destroy after death has to equal false or else this won't work this is important so next we're going to do create interface fade transition time of two now we're going to do countdown timer of let's do three to make it look nice interface and we're gonna say game over because this is serious it goes in the very center of the screen it's going to be extra large and it is going to be red because red is serious so when you do this you want to make another countdown for I don't know, let's say six. So they have three good seconds to meditate on what they've done. Then we do a true game over. There you go. 
Now, we need to go back to here, and instead of making an explosion, we need to have it switch page. No, nope, not next page. That would work, but I don't, I, I want to be a little more specific. So, we're going to go to the game over page. So to make this look a tiny bit nicer, we can copy and paste the revi revive line. Instead of doing revive, we can do play effect. And then we can choose an effect. Now I just bought some firework effects. So we're gonna do some firework explosions. Just because we all need to be happy in fireworks when we get revived from the dead. Come on. There. See? We have effects. It seemed to lag a little bit, so you might want to be careful what effect you choose exactly. Oh, I can't touch this. But see? It's happy when I revive. But when I die the last time, I stay down. Wait. That wasn't supposed to happen. So we did something wrong. Because we don't want it to be destroyed on death. Destroy after death equals false. This should work. I'm getting a really annoying sound in my headphones all of a sudden. Oh goodness! What happened? Well, it seems that Project Spark has crashed. That being said, the tutorial should give you a good overview of how it works and everything along those lines. So, um, I would say that probably what I did wrong on the last page is I probably need to specify when the page is entered to destroy on death equals false. That, or you can just go into the character properties and tell them never to destroy on death because it's it's kind of unnecessary for them to destroy on death. So, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Uh, thank you very much for watching and enduring all, goodness, 27 minutes on my end at least. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know. Leave a like or subscribe. And if you have something that you want me to do a tutorial about, uh, please let me know. This is I, I've got all the equipment and the rigging, so... Um, thank you guys for watching.